Okay, this is a thing now. We're talking about it. This is a big deal. We had Donnie and Dolly earlier today, and the quote reads this. I can tell you right now today, there is interest on the trade market in Andre Kuzmenko. There are teams that are still calling. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to this Donnie and Dolly clip if you want to listen to the segment yourself. But it was posted onto the Arcanuck sub by Camaro Girl. And what this user did was they paraphrased it. Things are not looking good right now. Agent Dan Milstein was not answering his phone or texts last night. Other teams are still interested. The Canucks have not given Kuzmets Kuznetsov's, oh man, Kuzmenko's agent permission to talk to other teams as of this morning. Now, he also had a few other segments on the same Donnie and Dolly show, like Elliot Friedman going out there and saying that they've been contacted by teams. Now, which teams, you may ask? We don't really know. But for now, this Andre Kuzmenko situation has been brewing, and it's getting to a point where I think we have no real option but to talk about it, right? We have no real choice but to say, hey, this is a legit conversation that we now need to be having because the guy has been scratched so much. He's at 19 points in 32 games played. His full season projection is at 45 points in 76 games. On pace for 20 goals... Like, if he had just had 82 points, or 82 games played, excuse me, as his projection rather than 76 games, he probably would be on pace for 20 goals. Sure, it's not the 39 goals he had yesterday, or yesteryear, excuse me, it's not the 74 points that he had last year either, but Andre Kuzmenko is still a good enough NHL player despite the slump, despite the low production. We still know that he has talent. And after getting scratched all these times, we are still hearing more and more that there are teams going out there talking to the Vancouver Canucks, saying that they would like Andre Kuzmenko in a trade-like scenario. This guy still has value, even though he is in the doghouse, even though Rick Tockett refuses to play him. So, let's go out there and read some comments. Here is that same post made on the R Canucks sub top comment from Barely in College goes out there and says this, I'll be real. I don't think the Vancouver Canucks play much better defensively without Kuzmenko than they do with him. He's not so egregiously bad defensively that he has that much of a negative impact, and when they struggle, it's because the team as a whole is having a tough night. It's bizarre that Andre Kuzmenko is the one guy who keeps being singled out when every line besides the third line has lacked consistency over the last few weeks. There is room on an NHL roster for one or two forwards who aren't ideal for checkers, but have the offensive instincts to serve as the target man-type net front poacher. I'd be livid if I were Dan Milstein. This guy far outproduced his one-year ELC last season, responded to your healthy scratch last time with two goals, and hasn't said a peep about how he's been treated this season. What more do you want before you realize his value to your team is as a one-shot scorer and not a puck hound? And this is an interesting argument to bring up for Kuzmenko because realistically, I mean, even if you say that he hasn't been the best forechecking, he hasn't been the best defensively, he is still a lot better than many of these other Canucks when it comes to producing offense. And that, I feel, should be the mindset when it comes to this player, that Kuzmenko is not a guy that you're getting onto your team because you want a forechecking, puck hound kind of beast. He is supposed to be that sniper. And for the most part, he struggled at that. And you could definitely say there's an argument to be had. Hey, if he's not scoring, what else is he doing? Is he forechecking? Is he helping the team out defensively? If he's not, then okay, give him the scratch. But last time he did get scratched, he came back and he looked a lot better. Even aside from the two goals, Andre Kuzmenko was getting more shots. And even in the most recent stint, there still is reason to believe that there is talent in this profile. Heading back over to the comment section here, I'd be livid if I were Milstein. Yeah, honestly, I would be too, especially with the idea now that he is not answering his phone or text from last night. Like, I get it, you know, sometimes people go through rough stints, and sometimes you just don't feel the need to reply to people, but... If you are an agent of an NHL player or of multiple NHL players, I feel like it is kind of important to get your affairs in order and make sure that you don't cause a ruckus in this way to the point that now Donnie and Dolly are talking about it on their show like, yeah, he's not answering his texts, other teams are still calling, he got scratched again the other night, what's going on here, things are going down. 
Here's a hot take from Flint Deadeye. The top two lines chemistry is off with the changes and Kuzmenko being out of the lineup, hence their inconsistency. And this is another aspect that I think could be addressed too. People arguing that Kuzmenko was not a gamebreaker are completely missing the plot. It's that he clearly has above average offensive skills, has shown chemistry with Pedersen, and has been struggling on and off. Pedersen's line is looking completely whack off and on, and the rotating wingers is clearly causing inconsistency. It's not all about Kuzmenko as a player personally. It's that you break slumps and allow players to adapt to systems by playing them, and you allow lines to develop chemistry by keeping them together. The move is to play Kuzi and hope he can find his game and adapt, and if he can't, trade him. Scratching him is just hurting the team in the short term and Kuzmenko's trade value in the long term. Here's another comment over here. Of course teams are going to be interested. He scored 39 goals last year, albeit on an extremely inflated shooting percentage. It sucks when a genuinely good player ends up in a coach's doghouse, but that is what happens sometimes. It is what it is. We need to either play or trade him. Can't let this become a distraction. It won't work well for Kuzmenko or the Vancouver Canucks. Then, there is another argument asking whether or not the team should have traded him at the deadline last year, and that's an entire other can of worms that we can get into. Here are some stats that I thought were interesting to point out. Vancouver's power play with Kuzmenko is at 25% on the year, so pretty good. The Canucks power play without Kuzmenko, 18.75. Now, I'll be honest, I actually did think that Philip Peronik was alright on the Canucks' first power play, especially when Kuzmenko was scratched the first time, but... That line yesterday with Connor Garland as the right-handed guy, I'm sorry, man, it just didn't work. Like, Connor Garland trying to do his, like, standing by the goalpost type thing, trying to get the cross-crease pass, it just looked kind of goofy and the movement wasn't there. I don't know what it was in St. Louis, but Vancouver's power play just could not get anything done. Here is another stat that I thought was interesting, published by Raymond Hatt. A couple of stats I found. Pedersen is far better with Kuzmenko by quite a bit. The Canucks power play has scored 17 goals with Kuzmenko on the power play, and without him, they have four goals. By no means is Kuzmenko a perfect player. However, he makes this team better. And you can see the screenshot of the Elias Pettersson Corsi percentages with and without Andre Kuzmenko. You can see that Kuzmenko has a 55% Corsi with Petey as his center. He has a 44% Corsi without Petey. Elias Pettersson has himself a 47.26% Corsi without Andre Kuzmenko. So both of these guys have significant Corsi 4, aka just expected goals percentages, with Kuzmenko and Petey together rather than when they're separated. So they're both doing pretty well, I'd say. It's just with the circumstances of where the team is right now and how they're not playing Kuzi, this trade update where teams are starting to say, hey, like, we need to get this done. We're actually still calling. We're still interested. Teams are not backing down from the Kuzmenko trade talks, and it was talked about by a multiple amount of NHL insiders. Here is Grady going out there with a very interesting comment from earlier today to end off this video here. Patrick Alvin watching Le Karamaki live in Sweden make plays in all ends of the ice while ripping up the World Juniors, all while Andre Kuzmenko is struggling to get out of the doghouse back in North America. Interesting contrast inside the Canucks organization right now. And I'm not going to go out there and nitpick too hard. I mean, the first reply goes out there and says, yeah, the Canucks are leading the division, which is good. But still, there are many things that you could debate as to whether or not they're proper or maybe even right in this situation with the Vancouver Canucks and their usage of Andre Kuzmenko. Maybe getting a wake-up call and saying, hey, like that, the Karamaki guy's doing some pretty good stuff at the World Juniors. Maybe that's the kind of, I don't want to say role, I don't want to say responsibility tasked onto an Andre Kuzmenko, but it is interesting to note how two right-handed players in the Vancouver Canucks organization are experiencing things so differently. How Le Karamaki was just the MVP for Team Sweden, MVP for the entire world juniors, excuse me, and Le Karamaki has been looking so good. But Andre Kuzmenko, a guy who's supposed to have a similar skill set, has been completely in the doghouse. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Andre Kuzmenko and this trade update. Teams are still calling. The agent is not responding. Things are looking weird here. And it doesn't look any better when you talk about the team scratching him consistently. We'll see what happens tomorrow against the Hughes brothers in Hughes-a-Palooza Part 2 against New Jersey. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section about Andre Kuzmenko. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.